Hello and welcome, I'm your Code Monkey, and here let's check out the top new games made with Unity launch in November 24. There's lots of great games this month, there's one with a really inventive genre mix, another one that is actually a perfect licensed IP game, there's a big YouTube game dev game, and the number one game, that one has one of the most innovative mechanics I've seen in quite a long time. So really great month. The reason why I make these videos is to show you everything the engine can do, the only limit is really just your own skills and imagination, and the variety and the awesomeness of the game shown here really puts that to the test. All of these games are uniquely impressive, so the list is in no particular order, except for the number one game, that is my personal pick of the month. Also, the Unity New Year sale is currently ongoing. If you need anything from assets, tools, visuals, sound effects, music, and pretty much anything, if so, then go ahead and pick it up. For some quick highlights, I always highly recommend Feel, great asset for polishing your games. Text Animator is also excellent if your game has any kind of text. Easy Save is great if you just want a save system that works. If you have tons of assets all over the place and the asset inventory is a must-have. Conrise Pro is great for taking your assets and making them look completely different. Or if you have some Unreal assets, this tool can help you convert to and from Unity. Check out everything on sale with the link in the description. Also stay up to date with my Game Dev Report newsletter. This is where I cover the latest Game Dev news and interesting articles that I come across every week. Things like this awesome free multiplayer Unity ebook, or how much is a Steam Daily Deal worth, learn the two paths you can take to do game dev, or how this Parker game made 750k in just one week. Check it out to the link in the description. Alright, so starting off with a game that has been in development publicly for over three years, it's Mind Over Magnet. This is the game made by Mark Brown from the channel Game Maker's Toolkit. Personally, I've really enjoyed following his journey over these past three years. You can go watch his entire developing series to see how the game was built and rebuilt from scratch. The game is a really nice puzzle platformer all about magnets, so you control a really cute robot character and then you have various magnet friends that will help you throughout this adventure. The puzzles are all very clever, all about clever use of the magnet to push buttons, magnetize areas, pull levers and go over platforms. It has quite a lot of interesting puzzle mechanics. I think the game is extremely charming, personally I love the art style. The game also has an awesome feature that few games have nowadays, it's a developer commentary. So for me, normally I'm not really into puzzle platformers, but I'm actually curious to try this game out just to hear this commentary. The game is already a huge hit, it's got 800 very positive reviews. So clearly, all the time that he spent playtesting and refining the game, all of that was worth it. It's a great game, and it's really awesome to see indie devs succeed. Then here's a game that just makes me feel old. It's called 420 Blaze It 2 Game of the Year Dank Dreams and Goaded Memes. See so if that's it, that's the name. This looks like the ultimate Gen Z terminally online game. It is all about silliness, all about memes. There's lots of very flashing lights, lots of visually intense colors, pretty much as if you're tripping. There's lots of text, images, and comic sans everywhere. So if you want a very visually and audibly intense experience, if so, then it sounds like this is perfect just for you. It's a very fast-paced first-person shooter. You kick doors, shoot enemies, you can shoplift stores, do some jump kicks, drive cars while shooting, get some headshots and really just blow up everything. The whole thing is pretty much a non-stop fever dream. That's it, it is really intense. But despite looking so strange and weird, at least to me, it seems like a generally good game. It has 600 reviews at 98% positive. That's a nearly perfect score. So clearly, underneath all the memes, or perhaps maybe because of it, there's actually a really good game that people are really enjoying. So if you're bored and everything in your life just seems to make sense, then maybe this game will help give it something different. Next, here's a game that looks like an excellent choice for a licensed IP. It's Death Note Color Within. It's a social deduction game, so very much in the vein of something like Among Us. Definitely the perfect genre for Death Note. It features 10 players split into two teams. The goal is to find out each other's identities. So Kira's team, they have the goal of finding and killing L, whereas L's team, they have the goal of finding and destroying the Death Note. This is a really brilliant concept. It is perfect for this IP. You investigate crime scenes to find Kira, then try arresting someone to see if you got it right, or as part of Kira's team, you write the player's names on the Death Note and get them to die in very unique ways. I really want to play this just to see how they implemented this mechanic. I wonder how many possible ways there are of killing someone with the Death Note. I'm guessing it's all preset. The main thing is really how the concept is absolutely excellent and perfectly matches the IP. I also quite like the visuals. The characters are some nice little dolls. Licensed games like this are usually hit or miss, usually a miss, but for this one it seems like very much a hit. It has got over a thousand very positive reviews. So if you're looking for a new social deduction game, or if you're a fan of that, 
Death Note, then this one looks great. Then here's one with an interesting mix of genres. It is called Shape Hero Factory. This one is a mix of Factory, Roguelite, and Tower Defense. That's a pretty creative genre mix, and apparently it does work. You have some empty room where you can build a factory, then that factory, that one is going to produce some characters, like your actual soldiers that you use in combat. So you combine different machines to make some archers, or maybe some knights, or some cavalry. I have to say, this is almost exactly the idea that I had when I was first going for the first version of my game that eventually became Blueprint Tycoon. When I was making the prototype for that one, the working title that I had was actually called Army Supplier, and the idea was indeed making some factories that made some swords or shields to create some soldiers. So because of that, right away I'm already interested in this game. The factory can be pretty complex as you make all kinds of different soldiers, and then you can join battle and actually use those soldiers. They spawn based on the output of your factory, and you need to make a good enough factory to spawn enough soldiers to defeat all the waves of enemies. And then of course, it has roguelite elements, so as you progress, you unlock new research from a random pool that is different on every playthrough. This one is a really clever mix of genres. Personally, I really like it. The game is out now in Early Access. It has a roadmap and already has over 300 very positive views. I definitely would like to give this one a try. It seems like a great mix. Next, here's an interesting indie spin-off. It is Temtem Swarm. This is a spin-off of Temtem, a creature collector game. So on this one, Swarm, this one is all about taking those creatures and putting them in a vampire survival life. It actually sounds like a great idea for a spin-off. It makes perfect sense for different creatures to have different skills, which make the game quite varied. You can find and collect different Temtems, you can unlock new abilities and try to defeat the bosses. Then, as you gather some experience, you also get to level up your Temtem to make it more powerful, so you can actually evolve it into different levels. You can unleash some unstoppable ultimates to take out all your foes. The game has the usual mayhem you expect from this genre, so tons of enemies, tons of particle effects, just lots of chaos all around. You can play either solo or with up to three players. If you're a fan of the original game, then this looks like a great bit of fun to have with those familiar characters. The game is out now in early access with a pretty Pretty nice roadmap. It has got 850 very positive reviews, so people do seem to like it. Then if you're into Lovecraft, here is Menace from the Deep. It's a roguelike deck building card game set in a dark world full of Lovecraftian creatures. Pick your deck from a giant pool of cards, engage in battles with all sorts of creatures, equip all kinds of items to grant you various abilities to aid you on your journey, then travel across this world and visit locations with some unique events, gather materials and build upgrades to make your next runs easier. If you're a fan of Lovecraft and deck building games, then this one seems awesome. Visually, they definitely got the sound right. The game is out now and has 900 very positive reviews. Then, if you're looking for some chaos in space, here is Void Crew. This one is a space co-op roguelite, where you crew a spaceship and try to survive. You must individually do all sorts of tasks to keep the ship operating at full capacity. So, for example, you have to stop leaks, you have to fix walls, otherwise you won't get sucked out. You can explore the unknown of the vastness of space. You can leave your spaceship and walk around, then engage in some battles with other ships. Again, all while making sure everyone actually does their task to survive. So one player mans the turrets, while another one actually pilots the ship. You can fabricate some munitions and scavenge for resources. Then also pick up some loot to upgrade and improve both your ship and your character. Do all that as you explore the galaxy in this roguelite experience. Play with either one to four players in online co-op. So this one had actually been early access for quite some time and just hit 1.0. People seem to really like it. Right now it has over 3,000 very positive views. So grab some friends or play with strangers and try to survive in the depths of space. Next, if you want to manage your own dungeon inn, then look at Dungeon Inn. This one describes itself as a cozy strategy management game. You manage an inn placed right at the entrance of a dungeon, and also right in the middle of two rival guilds. So you can lure in guests to your inn before they go in the dungeon, get them to stay for a while and spend some money, sell them some beer and other stuff, but also be careful not to mix the two rival guilds. They really do not like each other, so if they do get mixed, they get into a fight and cost you some money. The goal is to take your winnings and upgrade your inn. You can add more rooms, add a cafeteria, again, all while keeping both sides actually separate. So keep your guests happy and keep the coins coming. Personally, I love the visual style on this one. It is nice and cozy. The game has a sort of Saturday morning cartoon vibes. The game is out now in early access and has almost 300 very positive reviews. So if you're into some chill, cozy strategy, then this one looks great. Then for something very meta, here we have Is This Game Trying To Kill Me? It's a mix of horror and first person puzzling. So very much kind of like an escape room game. You are trapped inside a cabin deep in the forest. If you want freedom, then you have to play a game. But the game and the cabin are actually connected, so this is very much a case of if you die in the game, you die in real life. As you play through the game, strange things start happening in the cabin. So the goal is to play all the minigames and try to actually survive in real life. 
The game looks like it has a ton of variety, both in the cabin and the in-game world. Lots of puzzles, lots of mechanics, looks quite interesting. It seems to be doing quite well. Already has over 400 reviews at 96% positive. That's a great score. And at number one for my personal pick of the month, here we have a really cool unique one titled Gladio Mori. This one is a physics-driven multiplayer gladiator combat game. Personally, I loved playing the game Tori Bash quite a long time ago. That was a fun game. So this one is kind of similar to that. It's got some really wonky physics, but it's real time and has a lot more blood and some very interesting damage systems. You just grab a weapon and then try to defeat your opponent. If the weapon connects in any way, then it will deal damage, and damage will depend on what you actually connect with. If you hit a vital organ, you might deal enough damage to win. There are no health bars, so health is all about damage to muscles or vital organs. So if you get hit in the legs, you might lose the use of your legs, or even if you get hit somewhere that is not a vital organ, you might just bleed out, or if it's a about an organ that might just be instant. This is really all about perfect physics connection. It is not about fighting game hitboxes. The game features a ton of weapons, some huge two-handed ones. You've got sword and shields, double daggers, and a bunch more. Also has a ton of armor, and they behave as they should. So plate armor gives you more protection, but also exposes some parts. And perhaps the coolest feature of all, you can create your own actual moveset. So you create all your moves within a sort of animation editor. So you grab the handles of the IK joints, and then you move them around to create the animation. So basically, it's up to you to make sure you have a powerful strike or powerful block. You can actually go pretty crazy with this animated system, or perhaps if you're not into animating yourself, you can use the movesets created by the community. I think this is a genius mechanic that perfectly fits this game. Playing with your own custom moveset looks really awesome. The fact that you can create your own moves, that gives the game quite a lot of variety. And then of course, that mechanic coupled with the physics simulation makes this really unique. The game is out now in early access with 100 very positive reviews. The main complaint seems to be that it's a bit bare bones at the moment, but if you're looking for something fresh and unique, then this one looks great. Alright, so that's 10 awesome new games made with DNT launched in November 24. I hope this list helps you see how DNT engine is capable of building anything. The only limits are really just your own skills and imagination. Check out my own game, Dinky Gardens, and I hope you enjoy playing it.